Hey y'all, it's Sarah, and I am finally getting back to a little bit of crafting. Nothing formal. I'm in my um, room kind of playing, and I wanted to share what I was playing with in case anybody else was interested or anybody else ran into what I ran into. So, in the last couple of years, right after Halloween, I was able to catch these little guys from Dollar General. And I got them on clearance, and I really loved them, but I have missed out. If there's any other ones, these may be the only two. I don't know, but I thought they were really cute. Um, and I've kind of altered this one, if this doesn't look familiar. I've kind of distressed this and aged it a little bit, but these were Dollar General. I decided I wanted some more, so I'm doing them out of um, these from Dollar Tree, these little plaques. Um, the first thing I did was take the sticky off the back because I'm going to be using the back as my front. The next thing I did, and I'm going to tell you this is a whole hot mess and you are going to be so fabulous when you are done. Um, I don't really mind. I'm pretty used to glitter with everything. Um, but you can sand all this glitter off if it doesn't bother you to not have the back finished. Leave it. Don't mess with it. If it does bother you... Put some Mod Podge over it and seal that glitter down. Whatever way you want to do it. My kind of bigger deal is the end result is something pretty. So if you like it, do it your way. And I'm not going to make you listen to that sound over and over. But, um, and I don't want to touch anything. See? Fabulous. Um, so, once you do that, I chose all of mine to be black. Um, I think it's going to be really coherent. I've got black and white going right now. So you could do them all different colors. That could be really fun too. If you're doing the, like the black, white, and orange, you could do that. I'm going with black on everything. So that's why all the pieces that you see already in different stages. Um, I'd already started this before I decided, oh, maybe I should share this. So I just came in with just black chalk paint. Or, I'm going to show you the difference, um, and maybe you can see. Okay. This has a sheen to it, if you can see. I spray painted these two. I wanted to see which one gave what result. Those were spray painted. And then this flatter look, those have been chalk painted. So, I kind of did a variety just to be able to show what looked like what, to see which one I liked better. I ended up liking them both. Um, I kind of like that I have a little gloss on some and matte finish on others. Um, so that was fine for me. I just wanted to show you guys the difference. The next thing I did, so at this point, um, and I'm going to tell you, I just use my sponges, you guys. And I want to show you how quick this is and why I tell you that I love these Dollar Tree, uh, Scrub Buddy kitchen sponges. Usually, I would cut this down even smaller, but this one is already dirty. Let me get a little paint out here. I don't know how long this is going to be. Um, it is not a formal tutorial anymore at the moment. I can't get real for formal at the moment, but um, it's kind of more of a hang out and craft with me thing. So, these things, fantastic. Do you see how fast that is? Usually, I cut them down even smaller and use them this way. And um, then I don't feel so bad about tossing them because there's like 10 in a pack. Uh, you can wash them, by the way. It's just sometimes I don't. But you can see how fast that covers. Honestly, um, I'm going to show you how I distress mine. Once this dries, you really wouldn't need another coat. Um, as a matter of fact, one of these only has one single coat like that. There's a few little streaks because I've got a lighter, this lighter color under here. So this one you can see, I've already done it. Um, I went ahead and did both sides. You can see how well that covers up if you get all that glitter off. Although now I've gotten glitter on everything. It's contaminated. It just, it, it's what it is. Dollar Tree and their love for glitter. Okay, so I'm just taking a sanding block going around. 
I did this because to me it almost um, distressing it like this gives it a frame. You could leave it solid. I like it like this, but I took it a step further. You could leave it this lighter color, or you could go in with some Waverly um, wax and ink on a sponge and sponge around it and darken that up. I actually have them both ways. And I'm doing all the edges, not just the front ones. I don't know why. I felt like I might as well finish them out. The next thing I decided was to add a lid, not add a lid, make a different top, and I was going to show you some options on this. And then I'm going to show you just a um, a few other things to do with these little pumpkins. If you decide you get all of these done or you want to try this and you still have some left over, uh, I'll show you what I did with my other ones as well. But now you can see, now it's kind of outlined. But here is one of the other things that I did. Um... I don't know if you guys can see. Can you see how this dressing, this distressing goes um, kind of up and down this bottle? This didn't come this way. I did this one. Um, I'm going to show you what I did. So I've got like an emery board that I keep in my craft room. And on one of those sharper edges, I just went up and down until I rubbed those lines in. I'm on the back side of this. But easier if I do it sitting down. Let's see. Can you start to see what that's doing? Where it's dragging it all the way up. You can take it and drag it all the way down. And then where it widens, you're just going to sit there and kind of move over a little bit. I don't like doing too much of this part on camera because I know that sound is like grinding and I don't edit any footage out but you can see you can go over and make it wider and continue this up and down and you get those interesting striations and I was inspired by this original piece had that this piece did not and I kind of liked that so I went ahead and did it to um, lots of my pieces here so that's just an idea um, one of the other things is adding some of the darker color as I mentioned you can do this with Waverly's antique guys I'm taking a cheater's root um, this is an old stamp pad that I've had forever and ages and you can see it's coming apart and what have you um, as a matter of fact they don't even make this one anymore this is how old this is can you see how that's browning that out this is just a cheater's root if you don't have this don't worry do it with some some brown paint rub your fingers across there now it almost looks aged there we go so you're going to do that that now let's talk about um tops so you can see this one almost looks like a jar um these have kind of different tops to them so each one of them is going to look like a slightly different type of bottle remember these are the two original store ones um, so I wanted to show you how I got to this point and show you some things I played with um, that you might already have bought thinking you needed to have those things and now what do you do with them so here's a good way to combine some of these things um, one of the things that I did is a uh, package of skulls there were no white skulls on here um, and I'm pretty much going with the black and white vibe minus this one had the purple on it already. But um, so I just painted these out white. Uh, I think I want to say these were um, black underneath them. So if you were doing other color schemes, you might use them just as they are. But I painted mine white. I left them right on the sheet, painted over it, let them dry. So I was able to do that. So I'm going to tell you what happened to me in doing that. When I went to pull this guy off of here, I broke his jaw literally just broke it straight across purely by accident that is what occurred um, snapped it right off and I still used it so uh, as Bob Ross would say happy accidents 
I used the bones off of here. I kind of tortured. I feel like if I'm going to torture a piece, Halloween is probably the time to do it. I took one of these little dangly skeleton guys that Dollar Tree has completely apart. And have, I've kind of butchered him for some different things. So, um, his femur and uh, other body parts, tibia, fibula, I can't remember. Um, I've done butchered him. I can't remember what parts I took off of where. Um, I know the femur turned into perfect little bones. So, I took those off. And that's what's on here. I just cut them with scissors. It really wasn't that hard to do. This is no thicker than a popsicle stick. So, I butchered him. I filled in the holes with just some Dollar Tree spackling. You don't have to, honestly. I could have left them there, and I don't think it would have looked bad. Um, but, that's how I got this guy. And I'm not showing you any of them right at the moment because I wanted to show lots of ideas at once. Um, so, if you got this little guy butchering, they had these particular ones. Um, and I took the spiders. And I'm not a big fan of spiders. And I'm going to tell you that I have not glued the spider down because it, it even just the visual creeps me out. So, I have not, um, not committed to the spider here. But, I used the spider out of this package and considered using the bat, but I felt like the scale was a little small for my bottle. Which brings me to, there are these bats. And I just broke one apart. And now I have, I don't know, um, bat wings. Obviously, you could make really cute labels with your cutting machines. You could print them out. But I wanted to try to do this for those that don't have access to those machines. I'd already bought some of these things. And as I said, I butchered some of these things already. And rather than use my machine or any of that, I felt like I could go ahead and use some of these pieces and still get something cute at the end. Um, but if you'd rather use a machine, whatever, this is just an idea. Here's another butchered part. Um, I'm pretty sure that was his head. It fit these pretty much perfectly. I want to show you really quick. This is just a hack of a lid. It's got a popsicle stick glued on the front and some paper from a gift bag from last year. If you guys watched any of my Christmas stuff last year, um, the truck, the metallic truck gift bag that Walmart had at Christmas. This is left over from that. You can see I still got little scroungy pieces of it. Um, this is the last couple of pieces left. Um, so that one is a butchered way to do it, but I wanted to show you that the little, um, what should be the stems on these, if you wiggle it back and forth, you should be able to get that out without having to cut it. And you can see it's starting to wiggle. You can hear it. Now I'm twisting it and being able to pop it right out. Now I want to tell you, if you do this way. Wiggle it this way where it's got more support here and here because um, the reason the one had such a butchered lid is because I wiggled this way thinking that this was the easiest way to wiggle and it literally busted right out of um, its little hole there. So quick tip, if you're wanting to just get these out without having to try to cut through that stem, wiggle this way. Okay, now that I've told you how to wiggle, um, Adding something to the top of this. I wanted to show you guys some options. Um, obviously, the little Dollar Tree uh, technical term, tumbling tower pieces uh, are a really good option. You can do the hack version. See, I had to stop for a moment to look to see, um, which is just attaching something to that stem. This one, I'm going to tell you, this is not a Dollar Tree component. This was um, sad loss pieces out of a real Jenga set that I scavenged for my craft space. So that's a full size actual Jenga set where this is the Dollar Tree tumbling tower. You can kind of see the difference in size. But I still felt like this could look like a, um, like a screw on cap this direction. I'm going to cover it with some of my... Um, metal here. You could paint it to look like metal as well. That would be just as easy. 
Okay, you can see I brought my little my little case in here that I keep all my little random wood scraps, just like this one. It'll go in there. You guys have seen me use stuff like this on my mini, so that'll go in there. And um, I wanted to show you some options. This is the Dollar Tree version of um, the tumbling tower pieces. This is the real size. Um, there's other things. Dollar Tree has all the little kits that the little wood making kits for kids uh, that are like birdhouses and sailboats and things like that. I got those thinking that I could get my my boys to craft and it never worked out. So I ended up having a lot of those pieces and I have those in there. Um, you could use something like that. I wanted to show you those because I wanted to point out that some of them work really well as labels. So keep that in mind if you want to add more dimension to this. Other things. Um, Dollar Tree had this, this kind of wood puzzle thing that folded um, in lots of different directions. We had one. It got tore up. So this is what's left of it. And the tape that let you bend it and fold it comes off really easy. You can see. That is what one of these are. It's really sticky, though. Um, that is what... Oh, this one. So, that's what's on this one. And all I did for that one was attach it to the top. I could have left it solid, the solid black. Or paint it to look metal. Paint it to match whatever color. But it was a really nice size. This is a pretty thick one. Um... You can kind of see this is the cubes that they sell in the uh, craft square so you can kind of compare you can stack these things and make some interesting um, different bottles that one almost looks like a spray type bottle um, so there's all kinds of options don't overlook things what else did I want to show oh stacking pieces obviously um, you know if you don't have any this size, but like the idea of the jar size ones, you can always stack these and put them together, especially if you're using black paint. It's very forgiving. You can always add multiple multiple to it and um, kind of just look around, um, recycle some things. That's what I'm being so funny about this this last lonely sad bit of paper that was left from that um that metal looking uh farmhouse truck bag from christmas time and i joked that i was going to ultimately use every single piece of it and i have down to these very last ones these literally are all i have left after crafting with that entire bag and i've i've these are like the flaps that were into the bag i still planned on finding ways to use them. This was a great way to use them because the originals had kind of this um, corrugated metal on it. Uh, really quick, I wanted to hit on the corrugated part. I know I'm all over the place, but I love stuff like this where I get to like make it up as I go. Because um, this is the part about crafting I actually enjoy. I wasn't so much as a instructor as I like to craft and um, you guys are just my craft friends getting drug in it with me. Okay, so how I did this corrugated look. They make things that do this. They make um, paper tools that'll do this. I want to say that this one here came from Dollar Tree years and years and years ago. Um, when they used to carry scrapbook supplies. I want to say that that's actually where this one is from. Uh, if anybody knows, let me know. But for some reason, my brain is telling me that's where this came from once upon a day. They still make them. I think Fiskars still makes like a heavier duty version of this. But you see, I've had this all these years. Um, and this is all it does. It's kind of like making pasta. So I don't know if I can do this non-awkwardly here in front of the camera. But you just push it in just like you would pasta. I'm going to set this down. It's making it a little weird. And just start turning it. I hope I got it in there even since I was being so weird about it. And there you go. Now I have um, faux corrugated metal. If I would have done a bigger sheet, 
Um, I would have probably had to break it up. You can fold them. You can do things like that. You're going to, you're going to be able to play with it a little bit, but you're about limited to, depending on how big of one of these you can find, these little paper crimpers. I have one that's slightly larger, but I have been asked already um, multiple times if I had any idea on creating a faux look for corrugated metal. This is the closest that I usually get. I'm used to working at a paper crafter's scale. So... This is a scale I'm kind of used to working in. I have not played with a corrugated look on a mass scale, not a really quality one. I have played with some corrugated metal looks, um, but not one that I would really consider super passable. I just wanted to throw that out there because I've been asked a couple times, guys, this is the best I can, I can offer you on corrugated metal at this moment. Um, I had some ideas to toy with. I just haven't had the opportunity to kind of play them out. But to answer the question as of now, this is all I got. Uh, but I think this is a great recycle. I am so tickled that I actually used that entire, entire gift bag all the way down to the inner folded little flaps at the bottom. Okay, so this one, I'm just going to come in, glue my metal on here. This is how strong I am. I'm able to bend metal um, in a single bend. And I'm just going to wrap this around and attach it um, and just sit and play. I think I'm going to make this look like a screw on lid. And I'm just going to cut this down. I want to bring in a few other ideas on decorating these and um, then show you what I did with my other kind of leftover pieces once uh, once I figured out how many of these I wanted to make. I had a couple of these left um, from last year, actually. So I did a few things with those two. Okay, I got my little lid kind of attached there. Woo. See, guys, these things, it just, it just gives me the heebie-jeebies. So I've got my little lids on. I kept mine really simple and I intend on keeping my full set pretty simple. I may come back, maybe add some letters, but I wanted to throw some ideas out there. Don't think that you can't have any wording on it, even if you don't have a machine. Don't forget Dollar Tree carry stickers and things like that. Um, so those are always an option. Um, if you want to use the little wood pieces and still add some lettering, you can make your own labels for them. So you could print some out. I know that there's a lot of free printables this time of year. Um, I don't have any links to any, but there's usually all kinds of um, apothecary labels and things like that uh, available to print out. You can cut some out of your own. Dollar Tree actually sells different kinds of labels. Um, they have like some um, brown craft paper looking uh, versions like this that you could just use and do handwriting on them, which I think would have a fun little um, feeling to it. You can cut some out. Um, I used hand punches. I have lots of hand punches from being a scrapbooker, but I wanted to show you a really, um, a, a really easy one that the average person can do. Okay, a really, really simple kind of label look is um, this one here. You can kind of see, I'm going to put it against there so you guys can maybe see it a little better. Uh, and really quick, you don't have to have, like I had punches for these. You don't even, you don't need any kind of machine. If you can um, just cut the size of your label and you've got just a regular hole puncher, just come in and nip those corners. I know this, some of this seems like, duh, um, but sometimes you forget to bring out some of the old school tricks, so this is kind of a reminder that you can always do that, you can see, um, you kind of get that vintage kind of label look. So many ideas that I always try to squeeze at the same time. So, that's all I'm going to throw at you with these. 
customize them, do whatever. I'm sure that I'm not the pers first person to do this. I just wanted to show as many ideas of um, doing this Dollar Tree way, remembering old crafty ways, um, all of that. Don't forget, you can always add back the ribbon. Um, I think it's supposed to be raffia. Back to it if you want to. Add some more. Add some bling. I considered that. I do like a little bit of bling. I consider doing that to um, some of these just to jazz them up. I wanted to go ahead and show you really quick what I was talking about. Other ways that you could decorate these if you had some left over after you made some potion bottles. So let me grab those pieces. Okay. This one right here, you can see it was already painted black. I'm doing black and white. All I did was go ahead and decide, hmm. I could use that as a cute little pumpkin. If you're not great with polka dots, find you a pencil. Just a pencil that has not been erased with yet. Just a good flat eraser. Save yourself some craziness with trying to do it with a paintbrush. Just dot them on there. Go crazy with it. Make a pumpkin. That was pretty simple. I wanted to show you that because I... Sometimes the more simple ideas are the ones that slip our mind to do. So if you've got extra pieces, that's a quick way to switch it to something else. I wanted to share this one because um, I did do these two as a little matching pair. If you wanted to do something a little different with your bottles, you could combine either one of these ideas really. Dollar Tree carries these rub-on transfer stickers for um, glassware. And they had this cute little guy, um, which is adorable. And I've got ghosty themes going on. So I knew I wanted to put him on one of these anyway already. I knew that the first time I saw this um, because I knew I was doing ghosts um, on one of my little displays. But you could always just take the pumpkins off of here and add them to some of your potion bottles. I wanted to kind of share that. The leaves, they have other... Um, they have other rub-ons and transfers as well that you could um, pretty much hack apart and use to make your own little label looking things. I also want to show that um, they have ones like this. These are gorgeous. I'm about to use these as soon as I finish these up. This is my next craft using these, but I wanted to share these gorgeous things. Do you see those? Oh my gosh. Sorry, calm down. I haven't gotten to craft in a while, guys. I'm really excited. Uh, so that's why I'm kind of a little um, enthusiastic. But you can see all of these are a nice size. If you wanted to make maybe a pretty batch of bottles, um, these would be gorgeous for that. I love these. I'm just looking for excuses to use these, I think. But um, just look at some of the other ones they have some with um plants and cactuses and i think one with like leaves and foliage and things like that you could certainly use those as well on something that would be a potion bottle thinking about herbs and things like that so um don't be afraid to like butcher pieces and mix them together uh, especially these because it's so easy to kind of trace around them and um remove whatever you're going to remove obviously with those but even with these um you could just take this part out and just keep that something like that these are just ideas for people that don't have the machines to rely on um, ways that you can kind of butcher your way into at least getting um some cute images and stuff so I think that's all I'm going to share. I want to finish doing these because I cannot wait to get them on the shelf that they're meant for. And um, I will be back and just as exciting as soon as I'm done with these. Or just as excited, I should say. And um, get to playing with those little pumpkins I showed you. So talk to you guys soon. Bye, y'all.